we've got special guests on Let's Talk Jonesboro today. We've got investigator Dustin Smith with the Street Crimes Unit and his K-9, Rico. Welcome. Thank you, Bill. Hey, it's a pleasure Good to, to have be you here. on Let's Talk. And Rico, you shake my hand too. Rico, he's you, talking to you. You want to shake my hand? Shake, shake his hand. What? Good boy. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry I didn't have a treat for you. Lodney. I'll get you another treat. Lodney. Zustin. So Rico is uh, being is in, in an election year. Right. He's a he's definitely in a uh, contest that's decided by votes. So I guess you could call it an election. So what what's going on? So uh, there's a great organization out there called Vested Interest in Canines, and uh, they are a nonprofit organization that donates vests to police dogs uh, and every year they have a competition of all the dogs that have gotten vests in that year and uh, then they choose 30 finalists to compete for a brand new 2019 uh, police package Tahoe oh and we uh, were selected as finalists this year by vested interest in canines that's fabulous that's fabulous uh, and you guys have seven dogs seven canine officers Right, and at the Jonesboro Police Department, we have seven canines. So we have six dual purpose uh, narcotics and patrol canines, and we have one uh, uh, patrol and explosives canine. Very nice. So, what does uh, Rico, what is his certification? Rico is certified in tracking, apprehension, uh, narcotics, uh, evidence recovery. How does that work? How do, you, how do you train a dog? How do you know? You know, the, the, I think. Th Maybe a misconception is that any dog can be trained to do this, or that all German Shepherds, maybe pick a breed, are are built for this. And it's not true, are they? It's kind of like a highly tuned athlete. Absolutely. I mean, Rico, uh, he was bred to be a police dog. Uh, I believe both his mother and father were police dogs in Europe. Hmm. So uh, he, they, you have to breed a certain amount of drive. Uh, whether uh, it be for a ball or whatever you're using as a training tool. They have to have that certain amount of drive, but they also have to have some balance. They have to be able to, uh, you know, turn it, turn it on and off. They can't just be, uh, you know, wild, crazy all the time. Right, right. Does Rico get enough wild and crazy to f fulfill his life? Rico stays busy. He does. Rico's a hustler. Yeah, he, he stays really busy. And you said Rico is about three years old? Rico's five. Five. Okay. Uh, he's been with me for almost four years. Is that right? Right. And when, and when you say with you, you mean like 24-7, really, don't you? Really. He lives at my house. Uh, he's at work with me. He's at home with me. Um, he, the only time he goes somewhere other than my house is if we go on vacation out of state. Uh, he gets boarded at a, a canine facility. Which means your job is very specialized too. Then it is. Uh, you know, I mean, I still do, do everything that uh, any other police officer does, but we have a special skill set that, and we assist uh, in a lot of different things. Anything from uh, searches for drugs to searches for guns to uh, suspect apprehension, fugitive manhunts, hmm. um, anything in between. Is there anything that? Uh, I mean, w w the spectrum of things a dog can be trained, uh, a canine officer can be trained to find. Is is there a range? You know, is, is, does does Rico have a wheelhouse when you say, all right, this is a job for Rico, or is is it just kind of across the board? Well, he does. I mean, some of the dogs have uh, specialties. Uh, Rico, I would say that his uh, specialties are evidence recovery and uh, drugs. Uh, we have, uh, you know, some dogs that are better at tracking. Uh, Gabo, for instance, um, the, if you remember the one that got shot uh, yes. in December, uh, he's a very, very good tracking dog, and he's had numerous apprehensions uh, of fugitives, and he's very good at that. So, yeah, well, the dogs have their specialties. Um, now, if you lose your keys or, or leave your cell phone and in, in you say, go find my keys, uh, well, Rico. I don't say go find my keys, but I promise you he can find them. <laughs> uh, we That's we actually good. use that very thing on a lot of our demos uh, at the schools. Right. Um, 
we'll have one of the teachers go hide their keys and and uh, we'll locate them and the students always think that's pretty cool. That is fabulous. That's very cool. So tell us a little more about the SUV contest. All right, so um, it started on October 1st. Okay. It goes through October the 31st. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there are 30 teams from all across the United States. So the team with the most, it's pretty simple, the team with the most votes wins the SUV. Uh, what they will do is they will, uh, they will pay for the SUV. They will bring, they will bring it here. Um, and they will pay for our upfitter uh, that customizes the vehicles for police vehicles uh, for everything we wanted it up to $50,000. That's fabulous. Yeah. And that saves a lot of taxpayer money right there because we need that. The competition is, is kind of vague. Anybody can vote, right? Anybody can vote. Uh, you can vote once per day uh, until the, or through the 31st. Okay. Um, you just go to uh, VIK9S dot com uh, forward slash SUV vote okay. and uh, it'll take you right there and uh, luckily they went in alphabetical order on the pictures uh, by state so Rico and I are the very first one on there you don't even have to search for us we're the very first picture very you nice. click on the picture uh, you, you hit vote you put in your email address that's the way they try to ensure that you're only voting once right, per day right. And, and, and you hit uh, you hit vote and it, it really only takes 15 or 20 seconds yeah, yeah, I voted yesterday. I vote again today because we need this for, for Jonesboro and for, for Rico. Right. I would, I would love to, to bring it here. I like to win anyway, uh, yeah. but it would really help us. Uh, there are some really large agencies that we're competing against. And, you know, one vehicle may or may, may not make or break their budget for this year. Right. But, uh, you know, we may only get four or five, six vehicles a year. To, to put into our fleet. If so that, another so. free, uh, you know, especially the canine tie holes are expensive because you have to upfit them with uh, the cage, the, the hot dog, uh, the, the bailout. The backup, what, the hot dog. So the, the hot dog is a computer system that's put into the car that allows you to monitor uh, the temperature in the car. It allows you to open the door automatically from a distance. We carry, a, we have a remote on our persons, and we can hit a button, and and the door will come open. It'll also automatically uh, bail the dog out or or roll down the windows depending on what you set the temperature thresholds at on it. And it's a pretty, it's it's an over a thousand dollar system, like a twelve hundred dollar system that we put in the cars to ensure that. The dog, the dog doesn't get too hot in the car. So if the air conditioner fails, or if God forbid the car catches on fire, uh -huh. it will sense that and open Rico's door so he can get out. Very nice, very nice. Well, you know, we all need protection as, as officers and uh, the dogs are putting themselves in harm's way too, as we saw very clearly with Gabo. And so right. I, this is a fabulous thing. Um, I think uh, you have probably a whole lot of stories. Do you have a favorite story about Rico or anything that really uh, endeared you and, and made you proud of him? Well, the story I always like to tell people, uh, just everybody always uh, talks about the, the bond between the, you know, the, the handler and the, the dog. Oh, uh, the first day I had Rico, he bit me. It was her. Uh, yeah, I've still got the scar on my hand. And uh, he wouldn't get in, in the car for me. He, he didn't want to get in, in and out of the police car. He didn't trust me. Right. We had no trust. So uh, what we decided to do was we just uh, ran him and wore him out until he got thirsty and put his water bowl in the car. Right. And uh, finally he got up in there and, uh, and drank water and I petted him a little bit. And, and uh, at, since that day we've been pretty close. He likes uh, that story too. It takes time but uh, you know we, we're, pretty, uh, we're pretty close now. Rico's a good boy. If you, as you he see, he, he wants to be a police lap dog, <laughs> is, is what he wants to try to be. I love it. I love uh, it. But we have, we, we've had a bunch of stories. We've had a, a lot of success. That's great. Yeah, these, these dogs do a lot of work, Body. and uh, it's remarkable some of the things that you see and, and the stories you hear yeah. about all their, that, their work. He, he's not always uh, cut out to sit still long enough to, to uh, talk on a, a TV I, show. I'm not either. <laughs> but, uh, I admire him so, and I admire you, and thank you for for both 
uh, what you do for the city of Jonesboro. Well, thanks for having us. Please vote for Rico to uh, win this competition. I think he's a deserving officer, as is Officer Smith, Investigator Smith. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rico. You gonna let you shake your hand again? You, you, shake, shake? you gonna shake his hand? Yeah. Oh.